On the other hand, the Ghana Non-Communicable Diseases Alliance is also anticipating a rise in the number of late-stage non-communicable diseases at health posts across Ghana after COVID-19. Chairperson for the Alliance, Dr. Beatrice Refiadai, observes there is over concentration at the expense of non-communicable diseases. Well, Lava Firm's Kwesi Debra has more. People with underlying health conditions such as diabetes, hypertension, stroke, among others, have been found to be more vulnerable to the virus. The Ghana Health Service report shows many people who have died of the disease have these underlying health conditions. Dr. Riafiade, who is also the Chief Executive Officer of Breast Cancer National, urged patients to abide by treatment protocols. We are already worried about the complications that we are going to receive after uh, the COVID-19 is over. We are worried. Already we see a lot of late-stage diseases. We see women coming with huge breast tumors. That was before COVID-19. So what are we going to see after COVID-19? We are going to receive more people with advanced stage disease that we, we cannot even uh, help. And so we are using your medium to advise our people. If you find any abnormality, go to the hospital, especially the women. Examine your breast every month. Breast cancer is still there. COVID-19 did not come to stop breast cancer. So please, check yourselves. Examine your breast every month. And if you find any abnormality, go to the hospital for you to be checked. Because we need to continue treating the diseases. COVID-19 will be over soon. And we will have our new normal times. But then, before then, let us all keep healthy. Let us keep checking ourselves. The donation going to the over 800 members is supported by Gandor Cosmetics. Uh, we received the items, we've thanked them, but we also decided to share the items with our Peace and Love Breast uh, Cancer Survivors uh, Association members. We call the PALSA members to come in, uh, take some of the donations to share with their households. President of the Peace and Love Survivors Association, Vivian Jesse Safo, believes the gesture comes as a relief for especially vulnerable members. We have some vulnerable members among us. Some of them are not working, and they are the ones who need these items most. So I'm going to distribute to the ones who are very vulnerable amongst us so that it will help them to fight the COVID-19 disease. Reporting for Joy News, Kwesi Debra. In northern Ghana, the Upper West Regional Minister, Dr. Hafiz Bin Sali, is worried about the smuggling of government subsidized fertilizer for planting for food and jobs program to neighboring Burkina Faso. Now, he says the practice still lingers despite closure of Ghana's borders and the increased presence of the police and military personnel in the Sisala East and West areas. Correspondent Rafiq Salam has more. Upper West Regional Minister, Dr. Hafiz bin Salim meeting with agric input dealers of government subsidy programs came on the heels of a three-hour crunch meeting by the Upper West Regional Security Council, RECSEC. The issue of smuggling of government subsidized fertilizer for the planting for food and jobs program dominated the entire three-hour closed meeting, according to the Upper West Regional Minister. A couple of years ago, the regional hawk headlines for both the wrong and right reasons. Thousands of farmers who joined the Planting for Food and Jobs program tremendously benefited from the program as a result of that had their livelihoods improved. That success was however enveloped by the smuggling of several thousands of tons of fertilizer out of the region to neighboring countries, prompting a visit by the Minister for Food and Agriculture, Dr. Ousu Afriya Koto. And it's all because selfish people, yes. wicked people, People who are sabotaged to our economy, to the vision of the Nadu Dagua Kufuado, 
I determined that they rather steal the fertilizer and give it to Bukina uh, uh, fathers instead of our own father. Isn't that sad? It's very, very sad. You always think they are very quiet. <laughs> I don't see any uh, uh, um, emotions in your faces. For me, I could cry. To be honest, I could cry. Various strategies and security measures were employed at the time and enhanced during the succeeding year to make the practice in the bad. It appears, however, those strategies are failing and the alleged nations, saboteurs and wreckers are back on their usual game. Majority of you are doing very well, genuine business. But there are some who are giving each one of you a very bad name. And I expect you, the suppliers, to give us information about those who are misconducting themselves. Don't allow the activities of an individual to mar your collective image. Don't allow that to happen. We just got report that Cisala East alone, so far, 161 trucks load of fertilizer have been deposited in Sisala East. Sisala West, 154 truck loads to take an inventory of the quantities that you have brought. If you have sold them, you tell us who you sold the fertilizer to. Because we have indicated that whoever you are selling fertilizer to, you might take details and particulars of that person so that we can trace and verify. Dr. Binsali warned any supplier caught in the act of smuggling will be severely dealt with. And I will not hesitate recommending that the license of any one of you who we find to be engaged in the smuggling of fertilizer, I will not hesitate to recommend that that person's license should be redrawn and whatever contract the ministry has with you, that contract should be cancelled. Important for the news, Rafik Salam. Wa. That's it for the news. Myself, Gifty and Pia and Ben Efson, we're ready for the news review. Do stay with us. Well, we're ready to do the newspapers. Gifty is here. Gifty, good morning to you. Good how morning, are you? Good morning, Roland. I'm blessed. How are you doing? I'm good too. Did you sleep okay? I was okay. Can't always get enough of sleep. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yes. Well, good morning. Somebody said everyone. there's more sleep after death. I say, yeah, that's why we're in life, to extend it. <laughs> <laughs> Someone also says sleep is for the weak, by the way. Exactly, which it's, I agree. It, okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's necessary to sleep. Hi, everybody. Good morning. And I hope that you had a good sleep yourself. We're here to brighten up your morning and hopefully everything will go well today. Mm. Okay. We're being joined also by uh, Ben F. Sin, uh, the editor of Daily Dispatch newspaper, also a pollster. Uncle Ben, good morning to you. Good morning, Gifty, and good morning, Roland. Roland, your shirt is nice. Thank you. Thank you. I'll, I'll get my designer to get one made for you. Alice Couture, she's based in Tema, so very easy. Okay, thank you in advance. I'll All make right. sure that happens. Um, you know, life, is, thank you. Thank life you. gets forgetful sometimes. Okay, let me start with the um, uh, Daily Graphic newspaper. Um, okay, yeah. The Daily Graphic newspaper has a picture of former President Jerry John Rawlings. But the banner headline says, Government, comma, Amandi signed 500 million uh, euro rail contract. Deal covers 102 kilometers of Western Railway line. And um, it comes with a picture of the railway minister and three others, all in masks. Well, some of them in masks, signing um, the deal. And then the other story says, provide legal justification for excluding 
voters ID in registration. That's from the Supreme Court's hearing of that case sent by the NDC. And then uh, let's support, <coughs> comma, protect EC, according to former President uh, Rawlings, who was delivering his address at the commemoration of June 4th yesterday. And Roland, I'll just take a quick look at the first sentence of the Amandi, uh, government in Amandi rail contract that was signed. It says the government has signed a 500 uh, million euro contract with the construction company Amandi Holdings Limited for the construction of sections of the Western Railway Line. And the contract is expected to cover 102 kilometers of continuous single track railway line and initial workshop facility at a location to be specified by the government. It's an interesting story. Mm. Uh, see, I think, was it yesterday you spoke about um, rail? The rail travel or rail, yeah, yes. rail transportation, yeah. No, be so it'll be interesting to see how that goes as well. In the center spread, apply for permits before commencing operations. Tourism minister directs industry players. And that story is from the press conference held yesterday. And then conference centers, conference center faces imminent collapse. Engineer warns. Comes with a picture uh, of a group of members of parliament who went there yesterday. Is the members of the Foreign Affairs Committee of Parliament during a visit to um, the conference center yesterday. Then World Environment Day marked. They also have a fact sheet there as well. The back page of the newspaper has 7.4 million World Bank funded projects begin in Aguna Suedru. The story is from Gilbert Mauli Agbe. And uh, comes with a picture of Cynthia Morrison, Member of Parliament for Aguna West, and Minister for Gender, Children, and Social Protection, cutting the sword. And the final story, Dura Plus donates water to tank, to water tanks to the Ministry of Sanitation and Water Resources. So that's it for the Daily Graphic newspaper. Okay, so okay. just do um, right. maybe one more and then we'll go to Uncle Ben. Uh, great. Let me add the Ghanaian Observer. The Ghanaian Observer has a picture of, from, of President uh, Kufuado. NPP National Council OK is a Kufuado. That's one of the conversations I will be having uh, here as well. And respect EC's mandates from uh, former President Jerry John Rawlings. And upon Krumah rubbishes NDC's petition over COVID-19 cash if you know the, the, the minority uh, wants some investigation into how how we have spent monies allocated to COVID-19 the fight against COVID-19 case lots of forcing has been speaking about it they want the auditor general to look into it uh, the story says that the minister for information has rubbished that petition okay the back page can you take hopes uh, Thomas Pate stays in La Liga and the CMA delivers latest update on Kwesi Apia's salary arrears. This salary arrears, hmm. it's, been, it's, been, it's been a while. <laughs> and Diego Costa fined for tax fraud. Those stories are on the Observer uh, newspaper's back page. Let me take a quick final look at the centre spread. Uh, centre spread, uh, Kwekuse Chiado hosts Sunday night's neck clears Kwejo Barajman. Francis Sousu, a child gives to police others in Jobe. And quite also MP, tours project site with assembly members. Use 2018 voter album for primaries. That's according to NPP, an NPP man appealing to Nick and register to vote. Ashanti Regional Minister is telling all the people to do so. So that's for the Ghanaian Observer. All right. Uncle Ben, you have the Daily Guide and then the Ghanaian Times. So just go through the front page um, headlines and then we'll come to discuss the, your pick uh, later when, when we're done with the other newspapers. Uh, so uh, over to you, uh, Mr. Benefson. Thank you. Um, I'll start the Daily Guide. The main headline is uh, the Supreme Court has ordered the Electoral Commission to justify uh, why they are not using the old voters' ID as a basis for registering for the new one. Uh, we have Rollins demands respect for the Electoral Commission and MPP picks Nanado for 2020 and Nanado has already picked Barmia. So their ticket is, why should you, the basis is why should you change the winning team? And the Speaker <laughs> has ordered a probe into alleged fraud in the Selgami housing uh, deal. Mm. All right, so you can do the Ghanaian Times as well? The Ghanaian Times has on this front page, well, almost everybody has it, that exclusion of voters' ID in upcoming registration exercise, Supreme Court demands a legal basis from the EC, and the hospitality industry lost, has so far lost about 
171 million US dollars due to COVID-19. And the chief imam has advised that Muslims should not organize Friday prayers in major mosque until he gives the order, until further her notice. Mm, mm. All right. So in the meantime, well, let me just quickly do a couple that I have. I'll, I'll do two. I'll do uh, the Daily Dispatch, Uncle Ben's um, newspaper. And it has on the front page, NDC versus EC, new voter or new voters register case. Uh, the, the, the picture or the front page will be on your screen soon. Court adjourns to June 11. Promises fast track. And we know that we need this uh, as fast as we can. And it has a attached picture of the Chief Justice himself, Justice Enini Abua, Justice Jones Doche, Justice Sulik Badagba, and Justice Bafuboni. Yeah. Yeah, well, 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 a lot of um, memories. Uh, it will be difficult to be MPP's flag bearer after Kufuado. Uh, I don't want to ask Mr. Ben Epson what he thinks about this. That'll be too controversial for today. Maybe we'll leave it for next week. Uh, beware of political conflict entrepreneurs towards 2020 elections. And on the back page, we have all uh, the main story expatiated. Um, he has uh, on the back page of the Daily Despite Justice, uh, Mafusao, as well as Justice Ni Ashikoti and Justice Ufuya Amegache, uh, well known legal practitioners before um, entering the bench. Uh, we, let me look at the last paper. The Gold Street Business is on the front page. BOG's digital currency agenda and the way huh? it's an attached picture uh, in a story filed by Joshua. I'm Lanu, Dr. Max Solopuku Afari is first deputy governor of the Bank of Ghana. And, uh, you know, before all this was uh, coming off, uh, digital currency was on the high. We had the bitcoins and all the other coins that came up. And then ultimately, we've had a lot of crisis since then. Uh, the, you know, the rates just went down ultimately. That's Go Street Business. Uh, but on the front page of the Business and Financial Times, we do have business confidence rebounds after lockdown ease reports and then uh, nic must choose business continuity over increased investments yeah that's key for the insurance industry as well um uh, gifty okay i can go on with the finder newspaper mm. finder newspaper has stories about the uh, dr drop in blood donations because of covid 19. it's a very important story that we need to focus a bit more on it says 25.9 percent drop in blood donation the story is on page two of the final newspaper and this has happened in five months of 2020 due to the COVID-19 pandemic. There's also a picture of the chief imam. And the story is chief imam edges must, must not to hold Juma prayers. Tourism and hospitality success record $171 million uh, losses to COVID-19 in four months. Ghana and Amandi holding signed 560 million railway contracts. So that story is on page four. And um, yeah, uh, look at usually the back page of, uh, yes, of back page of Finder. <laughs> There's always a whole uh, big advert <laughs> <laughs> in the tourism and hospitality sectors record uh, 171 million loss is in the center spread of the newspaper. Koko board was and stood as Sumpahine. Okay, congratulations to him. And uh, okay, that will be it for the, for the Finder yes. newspaper. Well. I have the statesman. You can just add it. Mass testing not panacea to COVID-19, according to Education Ministry, to a black qua. Nine million to boost tourism and hospitality industry. That's a different angle to that press conference. NDC flaunt 870 radio stations nationwide. Uh, story comes with a picture of former chief of staff, Julius Deborah. And they say Julius Debra leads what the statement is calling diabolic media agenda. And um, back page has sports, Azuma. JJ Rollins and Carrie Minno to quit boxing for military. Azuma Nelson, no child is born a racist. Educate children on discrimination. Jerome Watting is saying that I'm sure that he knows what he's saying. He's mm. living it. Mm. And uh, yeah. I'll All right. For the statement. And, the statement. Uh, and Gifty and Uncle Ben, we do know that the story that has dominated the headlines al along other ones, uh, mainly over the last 12 hours, is that.
uh, Supreme Court directive to the Electoral Commission, look, we need you to come and furnish us with reasons, uh, further and better particulars in my own phrase, why uh, you would want to exclude the voter ID card, etc., from this. But, Gifty, let me just first pick your mind on the subject and when the news rage on what you thought before we go to Uncle Ben. Um, well, I don't know, but uh, I've heard some things that I don't want to, I can't really say on, on, on Because you feel it's TV. controversial. Um, well... S state what you think is not. Uh, then we're I, free. Just, I, just, I, just, <laughs> I just think that personally, I think I don't see any sense in not including the old voters register. You mean but that the, it doesn't make sense not to, to me, include... it doesn't. But those who have pushed for it have said that there were fundamental flaws revealed in that... Uh, uh, court case back then in 2016 and those fundamental flaws makes it practically wrong to include the voters register in this particular exercise I don't buy that I don't I don't believe in that. I think it's a for me personally I will side with the money I think it's an absolute waste of money for us to go through this entire process again but um, we leave it to the Electoral Commission. This is their mandate. This is their job. If they feel that we have the finances to go <laughs> with it, if they feel that despite the pandemic we mm. can still work it out and we can still put a lot of people, it's okay. I would have opted for, like the civil society organizations push for a limited voter registration mm. so that those who have just turned 18 other people can come aboard. I think it makes sense, especially in this pandemic. I think it makes financial sense. But it makes public health sense as well. Yeah, what do yeah. I know? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. what do we know? That's, uh, and and, and uh, 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 Uncle, Uncle Afsini, if you look at this um, Supreme Court panel, it's even led by the Chief Justice himself and a number of some of the top justices of, of the APS court. Uh, it really means that the court meant business on the subject. Yes, Roland and Gifty, I think so. I think that there are two aspects to this uh, court case and the general discussions. Whether one, the new register should go on, and two, whether the old voters register uh, should be a basis for registration. Um, if I'm, I don't gamble, but if I'm to gamble, I won't be surprised if the Supreme Court says that, okay, because you can see that they are made for the, the EC has until Monday, the 8th of June, to give the legal basis. And the case itself will continue on Thursday, June 11th. Remember, as uh, yesterday, I was saying that I'll be very surprised if. Um, this case lasts more than two weeks. And I'll be surprised if it starts, they may decide to sit on a Saturday or sit on the weekend. I think that if the Supreme Court, for example, says that, well, you've started the process of registration, but perhaps we think that there hasn't been enough justification to allow the old uh, voter ID cards as a basis, apart from because some people may have attained 18, or some people may not have registered in previous registration exercises. So those people may then take advantage of um, a passport or a Ghana card. So maybe, maybe the Supreme Court will make the old voters register the third criteria for re registry for the new elections, mm -hmm. the new voters register. Well, it's important that the Supreme Court also has empaneled all, all these judges. And I found it quite fascinating. And it also shows that they're quite serious about it. In the first place, in my perspective, mm -hmm. I think that the, the Supreme Court feels that we need to make sure that an institution which is backed with an independent role and objective by the Constitution needs to be given that free hand and atmosphere to operate. Yeah, uh, At the mm -hmm. end of the day, there are also citizens who could um, ultimately be left in the dark. I don't want to say disenfranchised. I've said it, though. Mm -hmm. uh, which, uh, because they don't have access. Mm -hmm. Access to the primary documents that ideally they would have needed to register quickly. Mm -hmm. And you even mentioned that when uh, we're in a period which is not normal. Mm -hmm. Now, the argument that people use NHIA cards, etc., to register, is that the main argument to say that then they can't qualify if we want to use the perspective of who is a Ghanaian, 
not to register or to be voters yeah. is the law because it's a constitutional instrument which will guide the way elections are, have been organized and will be organized the only reason for which we have an independent constitutional uh, um, commission that needs to organize elections on behalf of the people to say I'm going strictly by this mm -hmm. and not use any moral reasoning to attach to it so uh, it begs the question as to whether we are empathetic, apart from just being legal, but also having that feeling for the ordinary Ghanaian who may not have access to the documents. And, and well. many people don't have access to passports and the national card. I don't have any, for example, but I, I, at least I can say I'm privileged. Hmm. I can easily get access to something else or I have a passport. Yeah. But what about those who are in the rural areas and all that? I don't know what Gifty thinks about. Well, for me, there's too much politics at play. Um, there's too much politics at play, quite sincerely. Um, I don't know who to trust. I don't know who to believe. Uh, but I'll just, I'll just uh, give it to the Electoral Commission that they know what they're doing and that this is a, a, um, an independent body. There's also a case that uh, Mahama Yarga, former Minister for Information, is also seeks to push that they, at least there could be the addition of birth certificate as part of the ways that you can somebody can register. I don't know how far that case has gone, but this is something that came up uh, also in, in in Parliament. I think there's a lot of, and we'll be kidding ourselves to 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 think that there isn't politics at play. There's a lot of politics at play. Depending on where you're standing, you look at the issues differently. But at the but at the end of the day, I will urge the stakeholders to look out for the interests. Of, of of the oh, okay. Ghanaian and mm. I, I mean maybe it's even a cliche maybe it doesn't even you know. okay uh, uncle Benefson what is your story pick for this morning I think that my story pick will be the Supreme uh, Court decision you know the uh, full association of Ghana if you look at Wikipedia it puts the number of Fulanis in Ghana at nearly 900,000 now they are prepared to sue uh, the national health, the national uh, NIA. They are prepared to sue them, and possibly that will also affect the electoral commission because what they are saying is that they've been denied. They said nearly a million of their people have been captured, but they've not been given cards, hmm. which has a domino effect that if a million people have been captured and two of the source documents before you can do a new register, join a new register is passport and Ghana card. Now, many of them may have had a uh, health insurance card, so consequently they had registered. So if the Supreme Court rules that the EC was justified um, in excluding the old voters register then uh, i will not be surprised if the full association of ghana decides to go to court to force the ec put a hold on the registration and go and go to court to determine whether the nia should release the cards for the nearly a million fulanis who are who think they are ghanaians and who by virtue of birth in ghana mm. that case is settled so we have a two-leg uh, court cases there. Yeah, yeah. Um, and and Gifty okay. wanted to look at a story on the front page of the Daily Dispatch newspaper. And, the, uh, and I'm That's interested a in... for the morning. Yeah, it's uh, beware of political conflict entrepreneurs towards 2020 election. I think it's a story that we have not highlighted especially this year being an election year because first of all, of course, COVID-19 came in at mm -hmm. a time that nobody expected it to come in. Uh, we, we've not Usually in an election year, Roland, you'll have all the civil society organizations, you have the Peace Council, there will be a massive drive towards ensuring that the elections are peaceful, uh, not without you know, conflict. I mean, there will be the conflicts, but there has always been this education, consistent education that went on. I haven't seen a lot of that um, in this year, which is why I think we should start lifting, you know, lifting the banner on this uh, a story or stories like this to for people to get get it into their minds so it's interesting that the dispatch 
uh, right to hi uh, highlight some right about it t t today. Although Uncle Ben, I think you could, they, I mean, yeah, it's gained some prominence, I should say, mm. on the on the from the front page. I think it's about time we start talking about that, especially in these times when. We're looking at registration issues here and there. The civil society organizations have said, look, it's, it's almost impossible to get a consensus when you're dealing with political parties in an election where the stakes are high, but it is possible to come to a compromise. And I think we should start highlighting these conflicts, uh, election conflict-related stories. Mm. Yeah. Uh, Uncle Ben, what really did you get um, uh, out of the story? Uh, meaning that what? People will benefit monetarily from creating disagreement and so, so to speak, quoted conflicts in an election year? I think that um, the chief imam recently made a very telling statement that it is unfortunate that one is getting to this time. You have many people from the Zongu areas be used as agents of, mm -hmm. and I agree with the chief imam, and I've said it before. If someone comes to you, you're a young man, you may be unemployed, and he says that, look, get 200 cities. <laughs> Let's go and uh, frighten Roland and Gifty uh, so that oh, nothing will happen, just to show that we do it. My appeal is that tell that person that he should bring the niece or nephew <laughs> to join you, and you will go. Because once that person comes to you with that money, he's insulting you that you are expendable. Ask that person that if he gets a free ticket or a free offer for a holiday in the U.S. or Britain, he's come to give the ticket to you. Please put on your thinking caps and tell them that, yes, you, you want the money, fine, but you also want the son, daughter, nephew or niece. I've been, I've lived in Kanda for more than 50 years, so I know that there are very good people there. But these political entrepreneurs will come and use you as if they love you. Mm. They don't love you. They think you are garbage. But but uh, uh, there's there's something I think you you were uh, you and Gifty said that I I, I thought uh, struck me. It means that um, ultimately people would want to have a certain objective. Either they want to win or they want to pull somebody down, but they pull into the into the conflict innocent people. Mm. Why is it that? Uh, in fact, I have to. Why is it that young people who usually are pulled into some of these situations don't tend to realize that where we are going, where they're taking us, is mm. a is a dangerous path? It's not that they don't realize. I think they realize. But over the years, we've also seen how beneficial how beneficial politics has been to people. No, you, Roland, you go to school with someone, the next thing you know, you're struggling as a journalist to make ends meet. The next thing you know, someone is a spokesperson for a particular ministry. You've seen the person driving a V8. At the end of the day, you want to align. There are so many young people who see these as an attraction, the pulling force for them to get gravitate towards. And then when there's poverty, people have seen the, socials, the social cycle of poverty, you know, manifest in their lives. And they see this as an opportunity to make it one time. You go for it. And then, then it's also the thing about militarization of the youth. Young people, most, most I mean, they, they, they're strong and everything. You arm them, you take them, you use them for what you want. And so it's great. Uncle Ben couldn't have put it any better by saying that if you want me to do this, let's bring on your children, bring on your grandchildren, bring on your nieces and your nephews so that we know that what you want us to do is, is fair to us. All right. And um, we have to call it a morning. Um, Uncle Ben, you want to spend 30 seconds to tell us what role, uh, let's say, civil society institutions like maybe the Kofi Annan peacekeeping uh, center, etc., could do? Well, I think that there is the need to harm on the dangers. I think that we should call these young guys that if anybody comes to record the person, and I know that Gifty, Roland, Joy, Israel, and the group will be very happy to play audios of politicians who come in the dark in the night and start whispering to you. Record them and let's play it on air. I think that this will check them to do it. And the one thing to COVID-19 is good for one reason, is going to have, uh, um, prevent or eliminate 
uh, those who hire people to travel, they give them 20 CDs, a T-shirt, let's go from Accra to Kumasi for rally. That is out, and that is good. Mm. Hopefully. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully that right. will help. help. Well, thank you, Uncle Ben, um, for joining us this morning. Mm -hmm. But uh, Gifty, we have to do MyJoyOnline.com. Certainly. Let's take a look at uh, MyJoyOnline.com. If you're at home, you want to quickly log on and take a look. Click along with me. MyJoyOnline.com. There it is. Um, COVID-19 patient delivers baby by a cesarean section at El uh, Isolation and Treatment Center. That's an amazing, beautiful story. Yeah, and by award-winning journalist. Beryl. Beryl Richter. Uh, Beryl put that story together. Beryl will be very interested. Well, I mean, I don't know. We, we may be able to see it. Maybe, maybe not. Yeah, maybe okay. we can click it. And, uh, yeah, um, well, it will be good to see the video. Uh, I want to see that baby. That uh, baby. Supreme Court orders EC to provide a legal basis. That story we've told you. And credit Mahama for the new motorway interchange. <laughs> that story is a very interesting one, I should tell you. NDC is telling the government ahead of the commissioning. How will that commissioning go? We're here to take a look at it. Across <laughs> COVID-19 cases surpass uh, 6,000 as a national tally increases to 8,885. We're gradually getting to uh, 10,000. Um, a woman with breast cancer faces eviction by landlord over stench. A very touching story and I urge all of you to click on that story and see how you can support this woman with a few CDs. It's possible. We've been doing that here. Let's do sports next. Hi, there's a Friday morning. I'm Benedict Tu. It's time to talk sports here on AM show and we go straight into our stories this morning. Now, the Ghana FA and the FIFA High Performance Development Team have undertaken a kickoff video conferencing meeting uh, to commence the association's part, uh, participation in the FIFA Talent Development Ecosystem Analysis Program. There is more in the following report. The FIFA Youth Development Initiative, which has excellent technical personalities, including Arsene Wenger, is aimed at implementing new programs to promote talent development, a good understanding of the football ecosystem in each country, and the various factors driving local talent development in member associations. Participating member associations will benefit from a FIFA analysis of their high-performance ecosystem in both men's and women's football, including all national teams and domestic leagues, as well as scouting and development programs. All participating member associations will be asked to provide feedback via an online survey. In addition, a number of member associations selected by FIFA based on various criteria will be visited by a FIFA analysis team who will have conversations with key stakeholders, both in the member associations and beyond. So that was a Cyberdia report. Well, Accra Heart of Folk have denied reports uh, that players are owed three months' salaries and reports emanated yesterday that the players were owed uh, three months' salaries following the impact of uh, COVID-19 on their uh, finances. Now, uh, according to uh, the, the report, as I mentioned, uh, the players had not received their salaries since March 20, but the Phobians took to social media to deny uh, the story. And this is what they posted on their social media platform, the management of uh, the club. Uh, wants to state emphatically that uh, players uh, of uh, Accra Hearts of Folk are not owed three months' salaries as uh, is being reported in the media. We therefore urge all to disregard uh, such a report. So uh, that's uh, coming from Accra Hearts of Folk. And uh, my colleague Muftar Nabila Abdullah has been assessing the financial impact of COVID-19 on the Ghana Premier League. The Minister of Youth and Sports, Isaac Esiama, announced that it would cost about $60,000 per match if games are to be played behind closed doors. This revelation casts further doubt on the potential resumption of football anytime soon. He added that the major challenge of the association is monetary. I, I, I think that um, th there's quite a number of uh, um, challenging areas, so to say. Um, obviously, it all comes down to money because if you want to embark on an elaborate educational campaign, it's money. If you have to um, get access to the PPEs, it's money, okay? Um, of course, uh, clubs will have to play or may have to play behind closed doors. Uh, 
it means money will be lost. Um, the National Sports Authority will have to prepare the facilities for us because some of the clubs use their facilities. There's a question about money, um, et cetera, et cetera. So it, it is money. Money plays a, a big part. Uh, that's the gospel truth. FIFA and CAF both announced $500,000 and $200,000 package to be given to each member association to help them in these difficult times caused by the COVID-19 pandemic. Many have suggested that this money should be used to cushion members of the Ghana Football Association. The president explained what the financial packages are meant for. The FIFA spoke about two key um, sources of funding. One it's statutory, um, it's money that we receive for the management of the FA every year, which usually um, would arrive in your accounts in the month of July after having met um, 10 key criteria or 10 key points. And then the special COVID-19 emergency fund, which is to support member associations during this challenging period. Okay, um, And then there's also a statutory um, yearly subventions from CAF which is 200,000, which has been announced, um, which also comes every year, okay? Um, so that is not specifically for uh, a COVID-19 alleviation strategy, so to say. Um, but that is definitely not enough. Ghana Football Association had scheduled to end the current suspended football season on July 26, 2020. However, the restrictions are still in force for contact sports until July 31, when the decision would be reviewed. Well, we told you about that conversation we want to have and mainly related to what is going to transpire within the MPP on June 20 when it decides to elect parliamentary candidates for the next election, 2020. And uh, it is specifically for constituencies that they currently do have MPs. That's uh, where they didn't conduct it the first time. And uh, we have the main man, um, the man who occupies that office to make sure everything is right and well organized and tracks all the related issues for the party uh, for elections. Director of Elections, Evans Timako, is a regular on the show. Uh, we're privileged to have him. And, and Evans, uh, good morning to you. Good morning. You're welcome. But uh, Mr. Timako, straight away, let's, let, let's go through all this process. Um, what usually is the process uh, until now, or has been? Well, thank you very much. Let me greet your viewers. The arrangement of the party uh, has been that when we are electing our parliamentary candidates, we have uh, constituencies meet at a centre within the constituency, delegate to congregate. The normal delegates are polling station executives, electoral coordinators, uh, council of elders and patrons to nominate five people each and if there's any foundation member within the constituency the person is also accredited as a delegate to the conference but uh, in view of what Ghana is going through uh, the leadership of the party and uh, uh, Freddie Blay was my uh, national executive committee uh, has directed that the party instead of congregating at a constituency center will now have a congregation of delegates in electoral areas within the constituency. So all delegates from polling stations will congregate at, the, at an electoral area center to conduct the conference. So in effect, we decentralize the conduct of the constituency delegate conference to ensure that you observe the necessary protocols under the COVID-19 management. So that's what is going to happen on 20th when the, uh, the party meets to elect. Before you continue, how is that different from what transpired in the past? Uh, as I said, in the past, you have all the delegates within the constituency congregating as, uh, at a center, a defined place, uh, to, to come together to elect. Uh, so to speak, as the agenda for the conference. 
But in view of these challenges, uh, delegates will now congregate within their electoral area. And the Electoral Commission has defined electoral areas uh, which compose of polling stations. So there are some electoral areas that has about five polling stations, ten polling stations, and so forth. So in order that we don't have delegates exceeding the number handed under the uh, COVID-19 management protocols arrangement, uh, we are expecting that our party people, uh, in collaboration with the Electoral Commission, will ensure that the conduct of the, of the conference uh, go alongside the, the respect of the of the uh, the protocols. And again, just to go through again, we're talking about how many constituencies and ultimately how many delegates. Okay, uh, the, the arrangement is that we have 169 constituencies with certain members of parliament. But the case of Ayawasu West Wogon, we had a by-election candidate who is doing so well. So the party, in its own arrangement, which is normal, I mean, the convention is that if you're a by-election MP, uh, you, you don't subject you to the next elections. You are presented as the next candidate, unless something untold happens. So we are going to go into this primaries for 168 constituencies. And in the 168 constituencies, the, the general secretary, has been directed by the National Executive Committee to issue the list of aspirants who have been uh, recommended by National Executive Committee. So until that list comes out, uh, in the party's rules of engagement, it shouldn't be discussed. But what I can inform you is that we have about 171 uh, aspirants going into these elections. For 168 slots. For 168 slots. There are also some constituencies that uh, some of the aspirants are going as unopposed. So by Monday, the list will be out for, for, for your attention. Okay. The, the, the situation of Ayala so West well gone. Um, aren't you possibly um, closing doors for some other aspiring individuals? The, the decision of the National Executive Committee when it comes to parliamentary rules of engagement is final. And it's been the party's convention that by election candidates who win elections are not subjected to primaries and other contests before a major election, unless something untoward happens. Mm. And we think that our uh, they... MP is doing very well. Uh, promoting parties' uh, interest in the constituency and supporting government in I parliament. In okay, so let's assume that the MPP just assumed office in 2017 and there's a by-election in 2017. That's the same convention that applies? It, it, it follows the same convention. As I said, unless something untoward happens. What is untoward? Well, you wouldn't know. I mean, you're human. Uh, in the same way, uh, a vacancy may be created in parliament that will cause for a by-election. You wouldn't know something okay. could happen. Be beyond the, the vacancy, I'm talking about uh, a phrase you use, uh, she's, she's doing well. So um, let's say the person elected in a by-election, after you transition into office in 2017, there's a by-election, the person is not doing well four years on or almost four years on. That's a whole term. Our, the the convention still applies. Our MPs are, are product of our party. They are monitored. They were sponsored by the party to be in parliament. And so if your actions and inactions do not conform with the arrangement of the party, the necessary decision will be taken by the National Executive Committee. Do I take it that the party then considers that phrase doing well and also preferring or offering privileges to individuals who either want to again contest as sitting MPs or otherwise? We don't impose. We don't. But our MPs are said by the party. The party in parliament has leadership. And so before you get to leadership, you would have endeared yourself to serving the party in your constituency at the regional party and national. So as I said, you are monitored over the faces. And if your actions conform very well with the details of the party, with the party's 
rules of engagement, uh, you are also given some privileges. All right. We'll come back. So, so I think you will not be surprised that uh, somebody like Brian Champong, uh, Kweijo Pongkroma, are uh, going on the no. poll in other constituencies. Don't worry, we'll come, we'll come to uh, that point. You will be open up for... Mr. For Evans, Mark, relax on that point. So let's get the modalities right, okay? Okay. Now, um, so for each electoral area, averagely, we're going to have how many delegates? Uh, averagely, 30. So it makes it, it makes it easy for social yeah. distancing? Sure. Okay. For each of the constituencies, averagely, how many electoral areas do they have? Oh, we, we are looking at uh, between 30 and 40. In each constituency? In each constituency. Okay. The, the ways by which they can vote will be within which uh, period of the day? The, the National Executive Committee directed that voting will be between the hours of 7 a.m. and 1 p.m. And because the numbers have been reduced, it is expected that Voting will not take that long time. Uh, we are still liaising with the Electoral Commission to help with the conduct of the party, as uh, stated in the Political Parties Act. Uh, we are in touch with the security services to ensure that security is provided. And, and, and all necessary protocols will be observed. In fact, the, the party is aware of the challenges and therefore, we'll not do anything that will put the lives of our delegate, delegates uh, in difficulty. The, the decision of National Executive Committee is that when the list is published, our members will take it as the decision of the National Executive Committee. And mind you, all those party members who were bold to have gone through the process have signed an undertaking that they will respect the decision of the National Executive Committee. So it is expected as such. Mm. Now, are there individuals, are the party, based on that phrase you, keep, you have used earlier, doing well, that the party um, has been able to negotiate with some individuals in some other constituencies to be able to go unopposed? Well, I, I think so. The party opened nomination okay. and made available forms to all constituencies through the Constituency Parliamentary Elections Committee. The directive was that no individual should be denied access to the forms. And it happened across. So at the close of nomination, some people in some constituencies uh, were going solo. They were the only people who procured forms. Then vetting came. And then appeals committee came. And the National Executive Committee has considered the report of both vetting and appeals committee. And it is based on that that the general secretary, Mr. John Boydou, has been directed to issue out the list by Monday. Mm. And all these have satisfied the Article 12 um, article uh, of your constitution, sure. Article 12 of sure. your constitution. Sure. The, 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 there are names you started, uh, Mr. Brian De Champon, famously known. Mm -hmm. And then also a number of individuals that um, everybody knows are well-meaning individuals, representatives of the party, MPs, who seem to be doing well publicly. Mm -hmm. And the others also uh, who are still not going on oppose, even though, well, also publicly, seem to be doing well. Well, well I mean, that tells you the dynamics. The constituencies are not the same. The dynamics that play out in constituencies are never the same across the country. So yes, it, it's politics. And uh, people have also also uh, developed the ambition. Uh, they want to be political. So uh, they want to put in their bid. And as a party, we encourage contestation. That's the foundation of our party. So we open up. And uh, the final delegate decision will be made on 20th by the party body in the constituency, so we don't impose. If, if yes, in, in, in so saying that uh, you are doing well in the eyes of the public, in, in the eyes of the party, and uh, nomination has been open and people will still come out for uh, nomination forms, they go through the rigors of vetting and, and the necessary decisions are taken. But we have key individuals like New Job and South Member of Parliament, uh, ACB, 
uh, Osei Asibe who have been contested. We have other individuals like um, Bantama Member of Parliament uh, who are also being contested. Uh, Daniel Chima Boaje. Uh, yeah, that's why I said that the dynamics playing out in the constituencies are not the same. They are not the same. So then if you are not careful, you'll be getting to the point of imposition. And that's what the party avoids. Yes, you are doing well in parliament. You are serving your constituents, providing development uh, projects in your constituency. You could be doing all those things. If there are other party members in your constituents who feel that they must also be on the ticket of the party to go to parliament, the party will not. Uh, stop that. But what the party will do is make sure that you satisfy the party's constitution, you satisfy Ghana's constitution, and then the decision will be made by the delegates in your constituency. The country uh, needs strong individuals who can contribute in the legislature, right? Sure. Okay. And the party believes that as well. The party believes Why is that. it that you don't diplomatically um, try to protect some individuals. For example, there are first timers who have been con. There are some experienced MPs. Everybody knows that, and the party just looks like sitting aloof. And we are not sitting aloof. I mentioned to you that the party thrives on contestation. Mind you, I mean our president, uh, who is doing so well, uh, offering leadership. When he was the candidate in Ebuakwa South in Eastern Region was contested in all his elections. And even when he wanted to be the flag bearer of the party, starting from 2007, has been contested by other equally uh, uh, well-meaning party uh, members. So contestation is part of our arrangement. Uh, we don't, as much as possible, impose candidates on, on, on our constituency. Mind you, you only become a candidate who would need the support of the party membership. And therefore, if you are imposed against their will, then it means that the party is going to suffer electoral damages. And that's what we avoid. Mm. In February, just this year, supporters of your party in the Swami constituency threatened a series of actions to compel the party to rescind the decision to allow the majority leader of Seche Mensambosu to go un uncontested. That was in February. What, as, as what did you read. guys do behind? You said in February. I'm uh, reading uh, um, yes. news reports. Yes. So. so it happened in February. Some party members were of the opinion that Mr. Oseh Mensah should not be imposed on the constituency. So the party opened nomination. Forms were sold. At the close of nomination, he was the only one who procured forms. And going by the CI 94, if you look at Regulation 12, if you are the sole uh, candidate who submits your forms at the close of nomination, you stand elected. Mm. So, so those things, the internal constituency dynamics that play out. So yes, but the National Executive Committee at no point responded to any of these issues that whether you like it or not we are imposing on you mr chairman sabonso i see i'll read you another news report okay and this one is on 25th february and nominations will be opened and we expect mr chairman sabonso and his supporters to allow contestation. It was not allowed. Now, nominations have been open, and in April, there's another story I'm reading on. Party offices are closed. The party office is closed for a number of days. There's an individual who says that his supporters go to pick party forms, and nobody is at the party office. I, I mean, the Yes, I mean, it's politics, and there will be local dynamics, as I said earlier. When we opened the nomination, and uh, you had our general secretary, the rules of engagement that was released was that prospective aspirants could procure forms either at the constituency secretariat, or regional secretariat, or national secretariat. So you close the offices? 
in the event that or you vacate you, the you, office, you visit the constituency office and it is closed. You, you have every opportunity to go to the regional no. office or come to the national. Those system. are the local dynamics. I'm saying that I don't know what happened that this individual will say that visiting the constituency office it was closed. It wasn't run by just the constituency executive. We put together the constituency parliamentary elections committee and it was chaired by chairperson of the council of elders in the constituency. Somebody who has endeared himself in the party and knows the mood and dynamics and appreciate the party's philosophy and will not at any point in time put in an action that will, will, will show a prefer, preference to any candidate. So, yes, these uh, reports may be coming up. You only mentioned that it happened. It, it, I don't know who it is attributed to. Hmm. I don't but want I to can mention assure it. You that I I'm sure you, you are well aware. Now, let's go to New Job in South. It's, um, the, again, the constituency of Dr. Makasi Beyebwa. Yeah. He was your, your um, shadow finance minister of the way. Mm -hmm. I mean, if I have to use the mm -hmm. British term, mm -hmm. when you are in opposition. Mm -hmm. And then there's a, a health walk that is organized by somebody who is now his main opponent in this contest. And the health walk, I can see general secretary of your party. I can see a number of individuals who are, top, who are in top leadership of your party who participate in the health walk. I also see even the, well, the, the Black Star coach is not... It's not a member of your party, ultimately. Okay. So the, the, I can conclude, okay. as somebody who is asking questions this morning, that there seems to be a general gravitation towards some individuals to contest some other members of your party who are long-standing and performing well uh, in the MPC position. But I don't know whether you are aware of the person who organized the health work. I'm not the, aware that, that okay. the general secretary. I'm saying that the person that I see, I don't want to mention him, is now. I is mean, our general open. secretary is one. I mean, Mr. John Bode is our general secretary. So whether you use the title to mention the name. No, 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 no. I'm not talking secretary. about the one who organized it. We all know who organized it. The health work. He's mm. organizing a health work. Okay. The general secretary of the party is there. Top leaders. And, and when was this? <laughs> Which date was that? This, this was in September. My brother, let's, let's proceed. I mean, I think that as a party, we put in place enough mechanism to ensure that the party is managed very well to, 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 to provide leadership. And, and so our focal objective now also is to support Nanado Danko Kuvado's government to provide the necessary leadership and developmental arrangements to move Ghana to the, another level. I mean, we cannot be using this uh, kind of uh, reportage to, okay. to bring any challenge in terms of managing. So you're saying even if some people fall on the wayside, cry, you look at the general It, it picture. has never come before the leadership of the party that the health work was organized and uh, general secretary That is not a party involved. event. So It's not. It's an individual thing. Uh, All right. So um, following these concerns that have been raised in this news report I've cited mm -hmm. over the period, mm -hmm. it means that people had grievances. Do you have any individual who has filed complaints with, is, do you call your disciplinary committee? Yeah, we, 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 have, we have disciplinary or committee. Or grievances. We have disciplinary committee. Is a standing committee of the National Council of the Party. It is chaired by uh, Grandma uh, Elizabeth Tohine. We also have conflict resolution committee, which has been, always been chaired by Chief of Staff, uh, Madame Frema Osopari. Oh, uh, and who, by the way, is celebrating her birthday today. Yeah, Mama, happy, happy birthday. <laughs> uh, you've always been like the Esther in the Bible. Yeah. And it is our prayer that you live to see all your aspirations come true. So please, uh, for us, all these issues, we are human. And so yes, disagreement will come when official reports are communicated to the general secretary. Appropriate actions are Have taken. you had any official reports of uh, grievances? Oh, uh, if we are, we, are, we are asking in reference to this, our the primary. This ongoing process to conduct our primaries, Yes, some people submitted uh, petitions to the General Secretary to be forwarded to the National Parliamentary Appeals Committee, which was, was chaired by 
Mr. Peter McMenu, a former chairman, 2016 campaign manager, and still 2020 campaign manager. He tells you. It was supported by Dr. Dokufo, S.K. Boafo, Mantilizi, Madam Cecilia Brandapa, other leading members of the party in that committee. So uh, there were in house discussions with all the aggrieved people, and it is expected, and they appreciated that. The final decision will come from the National Executive Committee. And so by so doing, the General Secretary will issue the decisions from National Executive Committee. And it is expected that all aspirants will accept the final decision. OK. I so there are petitions. Yeah, but there are petitions were received. OK. Petitions were How received. many petitions were received? I, I think I can talk of 78, some by people who have been, who were not recommended by the vetting committee and some by others who feel that people who had been recommended by the vetting committee have some issues to to discuss and and that has has gone on and uh, we've gone past that phase that uh, allowed the national chairman to call for the national executive committee to consider both reports from vetting committee and national executive and the uh, appeals committee when are you going to conclude with that as a party so that those who have raised those petitions, put in those petitions, they will have some finality before this uh, is convened? Once, once the National Executive Committee comes out, that's the final. When is that? We've done that already. Oh, okay. So, that. so you, you, so, so all you've, other, you've all thrown the 78 petitions in the trash so bin? No, not that. Not that. I mean, within the 78, considerations were given. So some, some individuals who were not uh, recommended by the uh, vetting committee, the appeals committee recommended to NEC that their issue be reconsidered. And I'm saying that once the report was considered by a national executive committee, which the JS will issue out, uh, it is deemed that the party has spoken. And okay. all well-meaning party members uh, must also accept the decision of, of, of the National Executive okay. Committee. Our constitution is clear that party members must be openly and publicly defend and support the decisions of the party at all times. And, and we've been advised that it's better you use your energies to support the party to be in government than to use your energies, waste it, and help a party to go opposition like you have Mr. C. B. K. T. N. I. in opposition. He's working so hard, but they're in opposition. But I think he's working hard to be considered as the running mate, and he deserves it. He has worked so hard for the party. Um, I would want you, crave your indulgence, if you have the list of the 170... The list of? Uh, the contestants. Oh, 371, I think. Huh? 371. 371, mm -hmm. content. okay. If you have a breakdown of those going on opposed, aspirants, etc., and you take me through, I'll be happy. I'll, I'll crave your indulgence that you have that immediately on Monday. Mm. All right. But there are key important issues that we have to look forward to. Um, I have to ask your uh, good self. How has coronavirus then thrown out of the woods? or out of line or out of gear, what the intended plans were, uh, and how you had to adjust? Yes, uh, with all intents and purposes, our primaries would have been held on April 25, 2020. But because of corona and then the lockdown, we had to go, go through the observance of the protocols. Uh, the party decided that we reorganized. So the arrangement is that today is on the 6th, uh, on the 5th of June, uh, we have only 15 days to do our primary. That tells the shortness of time. Mind you, at the close of nomination for the presidential primaries, uh, we had uh, His Excellency Nanado Danko Kufuado as the sole candidate. The National Council of the Party, which is the second highest decision making body, has endorsed him as a, 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 a flag bearer. And uh, it will interest you to know that the very day he submitted his forms, he informed the party leadership that when he's endorsed by the party, he will go into the 2020 elections with his vice president, His Excellency Mahmoud Baumia. 
And uh, last Thursday, it was a very delightful sight to watch that he's, he's thanking the party for allowing him to go into the elections with his vice president for the fourth time. They were in there 2008, they were there 2012, 2016, and going into 2020. It tells you the working relationship between the two. And I think I'm not surprised. That's how Ghana is receiving this kind of commendation across the globe. Uh, it's been tough. We've not been able to respond to all our pronouncements looking back 2016, but we are still working hard. And we know that with the unity of purpose, the, the new patriotic party and the Nanado Danko Kufuado will provide the necessary leadership for Ghana to move on to another level. The ultimate uh, decision then is that he is going on a post. I'm talking about the president. Yes. Okay. So what do you call it? Popular acclamation? It's acclamation. So it means leadership will, will come out with the dates and a program for constituencies to meet to do the acclamation. Okay. Mind you, we've expanded our electoral base, our delegate base for the selection of our flag bearer. All polling station executives are delegate to the conference, and we have over 33,367 polling stations. And multiply that by five, it tells you that number. We have about 6,200 electoral areas. We have all constituency executives, 17 of them, all regional executives, past executives, current executives. So the delegate numbers for the selection of uh, flag bearer is huge. So normally it is decentralized. So we're going to do the same, and they will meet and acclaim the president. It will be during coronavirus? Uh, that, or, 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 or because that is? The arrangements will be pronounced, but it, it will not be different from how we're going to conduct the primaries for our parliamentary candidates. OK. So the acclamation means that they'll still go and cast the ballot? No. In our party constitution, it will mean that congregation of delegates and the Congress, which is convened by the national chairman and supervised by the electoral commission. So that will be done. So my question, before we go for a break, is that uh, how are you intending to do this in this new normal way of living? It, it, the, the issue is that the, we, we are only going to get this done at electoral area level, but it's the traditional way of voting where there are contestations. Where it is an acclamation, still it will be at the electoral area level for delegates to congregate, observing the social distance protocols, and then it will be done. Wow. But they will have the EC present to ensure that we satisfy the political party act. Well, we show all the best, sir. And Thank I know you. that when we call on you, you, you would always give us uh, the privilege to interact with you the first time. At all times. All right. So, uh, Evans Nemakun. And Mr. Evans Nemakun is Director of Elections, the New Patriotic Party. And uh, I wish you the best for the day. All right. Thank but you. look, let's move on. We told you about. Uh, live interaction we want to have with you. You go onto our social media pages, it will be there. We're talking a meeting ID for Zoom, and it is going to be on your screens, but let me just run that by you. 9724668433. That's the meeting ID. Now, let me again um, go over it. 9724668433. Please. Last chance, write it down. Meeting ID for our Zoom conversation, 9724668453. And then we have a password, just in case you want to interact and uh, you're getting these difficulties asking of a password. The password is 285061. 285061. 285061. And we're just asking you, how do you intend to live the new normal uh, after the restrictions? And that was from the president's uh, last address. Uh, churches, some say they will go and have uh, prayers. Some say they'll go and congregate. Some say they won't. But how are you looking forward to that? If you are a guardian or a parent having your child to go back to school because that child is on the last year 
of exits of school, university, senior high school. How are you coping with that? What decisions do you intend taking? And how are you generally living the new normal, whether in your work life, etc.? Join us and we have this ID and then the passcode or the password right on your screens. It promises to be exciting. Gifty and Rapia is taking you through all that great conversation. I know you're going to enjoy it and you'll contribute significantly to this. But we're taking a break. When we come back, we'll have a lot for you. And hello there. We are back with the AM show. I'm here with Roland Walker. I hope your morning is going good already and you can see ahead into the day that it's going to be great. Even if it's not, trust that it will be. Roland, so right now we want to um, bring in our, our, you know, our guest who will today be our viewers. Um, so that we can have this conversation. We want you to join us on Zoom. Roland has already given you the, um, the Zoom ID and the password as well. So we have well, just a few housekeeping rules, all right? We want you to look good when you come on TV. It's one thing coming on TV, but when you come on TV, you have to look good because there are people who are watching you. You want to also look good for the competition out there. <laughs> <For you. laughs> so, so we want you to have a sh at least have a shirt on, um, at least have a nice background if you can. It's not compulsory. Um, and don't be lying on the floor, really. I mean, we've seen some of the videos. Some of you are lying on the floor, you know, stuff like that. Uh, Roland thinks it's okay uh, to lie on the floor. Uh, well, I, I'm, I'm thinking that's how they watch TV, but we have our ground <laughs> rules. So okay. th these are the house rules. But and they're then, not casting stone. The, uh, they're not casting stone. I, I, mean, you I, don't... I think many of them are, since uh, the way you mentioned them, they are, I mean, basically. Uh, yeah. But also, let's add that you have to... Um, mute the volume on your That's set very because important. usually it gives us feedback. Yeah, yeah. It gives us, so mute the not on the Zoom itself alone, but your TV set. Okay. Please mute it or reduce it to zero. Yeah, okay? yeah. Get I agree. it to zero. So when okay. when you're not when you're not talking, you can mute it so that we don't hear someone talking and then we're exactly. hearing the background sound from your home. Okay, so Roland, are we ready to go? Yes, we're ready. All yes, right, yes. so we got you on the meeting ID. The meeting ID that's nine seven two four six six eight four five three three. That's nine seven two four six six eight. And it has to be landscape too. Four, yeah. Yes. Four five three three. <laughs> our password our password is two eight five zero six one. We've got our first five callers, uh apparently. Let's get let's get on with it. Who do we have on the line now? Okay, so we have five. And mm. we'll be taking you off after you've made the comments so that we can have a lot more people. Okay, so okay. now uh, we want you to introduce yourself. The gentleman lying on the sofa on the bed. What's your name? <laughs> okay, and uh, Richie. Okay, so we have Richie. Who is Richie? If if you are Richie, please raise raise your hand. <laughs> okay, and then the gentleman in the soja, the soja shirt. Hey, that's not a soja shirt. Okay, Richie. Okay, so hi Richie. Richie, good morning. How are you doing? You're looking good. Thank, Thank you. you. Hey. Which, which of us, me or Roland? Oh, both of you. Roland and you. Yeah, I call it because I'm American. So, <laughs> Roland, tell us where. Oh, oh bro, please, Roland. please, please. R <laughs> I'm Richie from Hopoi, Jinyari. Oh, Ghana Revenue Service. Thank you, Richie, oh, wow. from Hopoi. So we have everybody aggregated here. Right, right. right. So, okay, so let, let's start. Let's start with Richie. Uh, the other ones, I don't know. The, the first person is speaking, but we can't hear you. Richie, how are you this morning? And uh, what's um, on your mind? Share with us. All right. I'm doing good. I'm doing good. And I hope you guys are also safe. We're there. blessed. Yeah, we are. What's on your mind today? Uh, please come again. What's on your mind today? Uh, not too much. Just work then. Mm, no more. Trying to uh, mobilize some revenue for the states, you know. So I, I see. How, nothing, how are you observing the social distancing rules and all of the uh, COVID-19 protocols back there in, in the region? Oh, sure. I think uh, initially, most people were finding it difficult, like, you know, voter region. So it wasn't that much. But when cases started uh, rising, I think, yeah, 
they they sought to know the the reality at hand. So they were going by the uh, social distancing and other protocols. Okay, Richie, thank you very much for joining in the conversation. Um, uh, Roland wants to okay, ask so, you something. So, so, so the, the main thing is, we uh, we 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 are asking. The president says that the restrictions have been removed. Would you go to church if your church, for example, invites you that? Look, the service is now opened. What would you do? What decision would you make? If you have a child or you have a guardian who has a child in school and the, and the children who have to go to school, what would, what would be your advice as well? All right, Ro, thank you for the question. I think uh, if I listen critically upon what the president said, is that upon consultation with the uh, Christian leaders? So it means they also kind of voice out to the easing of the restriction. Mm. So if the time is due and uh, the church leaders ask us to come, I think it's, 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 it's a, a good way to go. After all, this is what we were all journeying for. Okay. So for that, I will. And when it comes to the education sector, I think it's, it's, it's prudent for the those in the higher institution, the universities and the final years in the SHS, for them, I would say they are, their sense of reasoning is kind of high. So even if they go, they will kind of know how to go about things, write the exams, then come home safely. But for the younger ones, the kindergartens, for them, even when the teacher is with them, they are kind of moving helter skelter. So for mm -hmm. them, yeah, if I have a ward or I have someone, I, I have nieces th that are small. I don't dance. All right. Richard, thank you we, very much. We are not you, allowing them to go. All right, mm. Richard, we, we wish you the best for the day. So um, we're taking you off and then we'll go on to the next one. Mr. And, uh, Quenu, Mr. Quenu, how are you doing? Mr. Quenu, you've muted your sound. Do you want to open it up so we can hear you? Great. Talk to us, Mr. Quenu. Can you hear me now? Perfectly. Exactly. Okay, good morning, Mama V and Roland. Good, good morning. Gifting. This is Gifty, but it's okay to call me Mama V. I love that name. <laughs> okay, sorry for that mistake. Uh, my name is Quenu. I'm calling from Sequa. Sequa, for what to say? Se yes, yeah, Sequa, Tain District. Mm. Okay. In the Bono region. Yes, All right. Bono region. Bono region is one of the regions okay, that um, took a very long time to record a COVID 19 case. Um, so the question that Roland asked, will you go to church now that the, easy, the, the restriction has been eased? You know, talk to us. Uh, Mama V, it's good that the president um, eased. Mr. Quaino, it looks like we've lost you, have we? Can you hear us? Uh, okay, so we have to go to the next person. <laughs> the gentleman in orange. Yes. Edward. <laughs> Edward. Okay. Yes, sir. Edward, Edward, how are you? I'm fine, please, and you? Okay, I'm fine, please. <laughs> um, what, what, what's your view? Going to church, final year students in secondary schools as well as universities? Okay, so with a school, I think with a final year student, it's okay. Because with a tertiary, with a secondary, and with the uh, first cycle institution, I mean the JHS, it's good for the final years to go to school. So they can finish with their school whilst they wait for them to be posted to their various uh, continuing uh, schools. But then with a church, I would say it's not that necessary because it's only an hour, okay? It's only one hour. So let's say that one hour can be used uh, for consultation and other stuff but then you've been in the house you can worship god yourself you can do your own prayers you can do your own fasting all you've got to do is to just sit sit your uh sit down you get your bible you do your prayers and everything so I, i'm i'm thinking that with that one hour for church it should be used for consultation for uh agent problems things that need to be uh, solved, you know, 
in a serious manner. Okay, so it's not necessary for you to go to church just because the president has eased restrictions on church. And let's say I'm staying at Kanishi and my church is at uh, Weija. Before I get there, that one uh, is due, okay? So I would say with that one, uh, it wouldn't be for church, but then it would be for consultation and let's say some other stuff you would want to do with a pastor or with an elder or with, uh, with an apostle. But then with, uh, with the final year students, it's very good because they, they, they were preparing, especially with the BDC and the WASC students. They were preparing to write their final exam. But then when the incident happened, it drew them, sorry, it drew them back, okay? So they were kind of stressed out because they've learned a lot and they were ready to go out. Sorry, what if they locked down and other okay. things, uh, All right. or other things started. All right. They, they, were, they were being in the house for longer and they couldn't mm. Edward, so thank I you very much. Is, well, we're having difficulties with your line, so. Mm. But I think he's also made his point. Yeah, yeah, he's made his point. Uh, to yeah, get Edward, to. Edward, you make a very good point. You think that the churches should try and use that one hour to do more of consultation rather than have a mass exactly. gathering, which which works. Mm -hmm. Thank exactly. you, thank oh. you very much for your thoughts. Well, thank you, Richard, uh, Edward. All right. So <laughs> again, we have to establish the rules before um, you go over for some messages. Okay. So your phone. Oh, sorry. I thought you were asking me to go through the rules. Please. Let's no, go, go through the rules. Uh, no, that's no. what I mean. I think I forgot. No, so. <laughs> well, you're lying. But uh, in the first place, uh, we want you to mute the volume on your set. Mm -hmm. uh, also, make sure the background is okay. Uh, we want landscape. So don't have a vertical. Um, lean in or erection of your phone while you're watching, uh, trying to watch the feed, and then you, you get it right. We have some messages, Gifty will go through uh, before we admit the next batch of uh, viewers. Okay, let's see. I have a number of messages here, but the thing is that the messages keep coming, so it, keep, it keeps pushing something to the next. Let me quickly take this one. It says, NDC people, and people, you know, Ghanaians love politics. Mm. Yeah. So you can have an issue, a social issue, whatever, and on board political. for discussion. <laughs> Everybody will well, talk about that. the political part of it. So, well, I know in Akutia says, independent body that EC is, and so shall it be. I only hope that the EC will provide legal basis to rubbish NDC's claim to ignore the compilation of the new register. Um, Papa Joe, Papa Joe uh, of Big Shoe Shoes. Big Joe Shoes near Quadaso Onion Market. <laughs> he says, May the Almighty God bless NPP for picking His Excellency Nanado Dankwa Ekufado and His Excellency Dr. Mahmoud Baumia as presidential candidate for December 7 elections. Hi to Dr. Sharp of Imbo Stable Mixture. <laughs> Mami Soja of Quadaso and friends of Dr. Kinsley Nyako Quadaso. Thank you, all of you in Quadaso, and thanks for doing the watching um, as well. This one says, Roland, uh, good morning. I wonder if you captured what the NPP director of elections said about their MP for Ayawaso West were gone. That quote, she is doing well for the party, which means that the MP's duty is to cater to the interests of NPP members instead of the whole constituencies. Your, your constituents, your, you put a question mark there. So it's a question you are asking, Roland. He says that this has been the central thinking of President Kufado and his government. They have centered on the interests of NPP party members against that of Ghanaians as a whole. And you go on and on. But finally, he says the country is doomed with this modus operandi, which excludes the majority of Ghanaians from benefiting from the country's scarce resources. God save our homeland. Eric Ameto Kwame. Eric, thank you for, your, for sending in um, that message as well. OPK from Gorso says... EC will by all means provide the evidence to the Supreme Court why voter ID cards is one of the documents for the new register because foreigners are in the old register and Nanado has performed better and a good term deserves another. So, more, so four more years for Nana to do more. Regards to Martin J. Mensa Kosa, incoming NPP MP for Techiman South and Nana Kwekumenu. Go so what? Sanahene. Thank you for sending in the message. And it's good to do shout outs, you know, to get you all, all excited. Let's get back on Zoom. Uh, what's happening on Zoom? Wow. Whoa, whoa, whoa. And that's say. Uh, okay, so we have the rules. Re reduce the volume on your set, it should be zero. And please make sure you communicate with us with the audio on your phone or the tablet or the laptop you're using straight away. And if and you're not talking, someone else is talking, you want to put please, your. 
yeah. mute on. Mute. And then mute when it's your, time for you your, to talk. your tablet, your exactly. laptop, or your. So let's start with phone. the first person. Hello. Hello. Hi. Go ahead. We, we can hear you. Kweku. Kweku, go ahead. We, you're the one on the, on air at the moment. Hello, Kweku. Hello. Hi, Kweku. Please go ahead. Good morning. Good morning. The restrictions have been eased. You can go to church at least for an hour. Uh, at most for an hour, I should say. You can have at least 100 people. What do you think? Are you going to church uh, this weekend? No, 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 no. We are not going to church, me and my family. Why? We are not going to church. No, because you see the way um, the cases are going high. I don't think it's advisable for us to be going to church. And I, I, I would love if the church leaders would um, stop um, this church training so that um, we could find some vaccine. If we um, if, if have vaccine, we could go to church. But now I don't think it's, it's advisable for me to go to church. Even the one I think it's it wouldn't be enough for any church service. <laughs> Mm. Okay, Koku, thank you for your yeah, for your thoughts. You, yeah, you 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 want to at least for the world to have a vaccine before you and your family will go to church. No, no, no. Yeah, mm. so it's a no for you, Koku. So we have other people. So yeah, let's get quickly. <laughs> let's get quickly to the next person. <laughs> Perhaps we'll be able to go around and come back to you. Like Roland, we have Billson. Yeah, Billson. Billson. Good morning. Roland. Yes, uh, I can't see you. So please wave your hand so that I know who Bilson is. Bilson. Yes. Yeah, okay, Bilson. So now restrictions have been removed. Church, this Sunday I'm looking forward to it. What are you looking forward to? Eight children have to go to school. Last year of students, university, tertiary, uh, and then second cycle. What's your view on all these? And how you're living your new normal life? Thank you very much for giving me this opportunity. I'm a Muslim. I will not go to the mocks today, despite the fact that the president has eased restrictions for us to be able to go to mocks. Mm. Every individual must take responsibility of his own health, considering the fact that even PPEs that are supposed to be given to health workers to take care of us in the event of uh, an escalation in this uh, COVID-19 pandemic are not sufficient. So if you don't keep yourself at home and you go about to mock church and schools thinking that when there is a greater pandemic, you can be rescued, you will be deceiving yourself. Mm -hmm. I am teaching in a college of education and it is very risky the way the, the, the schools have been reopened. Remember that level 100, level 200, level 300 are terminal points for them to move to the next level for this second semester. So if you say 10 years to come, they are currently on teaching practice. So basically, basic schools are not in session. Definitely, they can't go. The second years who are currently to move to third year, first years who are currently to move to second year, if they are mm. able to uh, wrap, wrap up for me, Dawson. End of second semester exam must all come to the college, which is a burden for everybody because uh, we can contract the disease. Okay, everybody is at rest now. So, I think that the fact that Bilson, I think that your point has been made. You, you think um, the, 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 the timing, you think it's still not safe. First of all, you're a Muslim. You're not going to do Juma prayers today at the mosque. Thank you very much. I just need to indicate that we have just a few minutes to wrap this up. Um, I'm, I'm very excited to see all of you, you know, that technology makes this possible. So you want to make your point in 20 seconds if that's possible, okay? And so that we don't have to, you know, uh, take, take it off. Let's get to Edward Gordon. Edward Gordon, what's your, what, what, what's your own? Are you going to church or mosque? Will you go, will you not go? If you can make that in 20 seconds, that will be great. 
Hi, Edward. Talk to us. Okay, we've lost Edward. Let's go to Kweku. Kweku. Kweku Magzi. Kweku Magzi, why are you calling from? And um, will you go to church, the mosque? Which one is working for you? 20 seconds, if you may. Uh, yeah, I get to you. I'm from, calling from Tejima. And then. Yeah, a very, a very good morning um, to you and your listeners. I, um, for. Is it me? Kweku Magzin. We said. Yes. Yes, yes. I think I'm, I'm Kweku Magzin. Okay. Please go, go ahead. Kweku Magzin. Yes. I think. Yes, yes. Roland, I think uh, the problem is Hello? our churches are not ready to contain the virus in the churches. They can't. For me, I think even our health officials are struggling to even contain the virus in the communities where the way it's spreading, the churches were well. We've been allowed to go to church, fine, but that doesn't mean by all means everybody should go. Oh, the church cannot. Even with the thermometer guns, getting thermometer guns are even a problem now in Ghana. So for me, I don't think they can contain the virus or can even check people. They can't control. Which, how do you go to the church and leave your children behind? It's not possible. Mm. So let's take some time, at least. Yes, it's not, it's not possible. Let's take some time, at least. The leaders can meet for now. 20 leaders can meet and pray. Then they invite other leaders, you know, kaka kaka. So by, by the time we get to December, at least, we would have known where to go. It's not possible now. They should wait. Churches that are rushing to go to church, they should, I'm begging them. They should, they should please wait for us. If it's a collection, they should wait. When we come back, we'll give them more. We beg them so that the thing doesn't escalate. Please, I beg them in the name of Jesus. It's not easy. Even with our health officials, they are struggling to contain the viruses in the communities. Okay. Right. Thank you very much. Um, it's a very interesting point you make. It's not. Uh, most of them have said that it's not because of the offering. Uh, they have said that they miss the congregation, uh, uh, as the Bible says. So, uh, thanks for that one as well. Let's move to the next person. Uh, who do we have next? Edward Gordon. Edward. Edward, talk to us. Tell us where you're where you're calling from and. Uh, whether or not you are going to the mosque or the church. Edward Gordon? Okay. It looks like Edward is not uh, up for it at the moment. Edward, we might be able to come back to you next person. Nanayao, Nanayao, you're on. It's, it's time for you to talk to us. 20 seconds, if you may. Church, mosque, school. Hello? Yes, please go ahead. For the, church, for the church, I don't think I'll be there. But just a quick message for our final year students, just to say that as they are going, they are, their lives are mostly dependent on them, mm. and they should take a very, a very good care of themselves, observe all the protocols, and then what have you. Mm. I, I really appreciate the fact that the government is going to give them some other um safety staffs to make sure that they are safe on campus but i admonish the universities to also put in place certain measures to make sure that they are safe especially those uh, continuing students who are in the diaspora i will admonish the university to make provisions for them in the various halls of residence to make sure that they are safe over there mm. well, right. thank you very much uh, you sound like you're a lecturer Well, let's let's go to Eugenia. Uh, Eugenia, please raise your hand and let me see you. And then, please respond to the question just in 20 seconds. Um, your restrictions, will you go to church or mosque, etc.? Hello. Yeah. Good I, I said Eugenia. <laughs> Uh, Eugene. Okay, Eugene. Sorry. Okay, Eugene. so we essentially. Okay, sorry, we're looking for a woman. Okay, okay. Hello. You sound like a politician, too, true. Okay, so. Hello. Yes, Eugene. Yeah. Good morning. Mohammed. No, no, Eugene. Eugene, please go ahead. Oh. Okay. Okay, Mohammed. Mohammed, wait, wave, 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 and let me see. Mohammed. Yeah, okay. shukran, shukran. Charlie, go ahead, go ahead. Mohammed. 
All right. Well, we have to take a break. And uh, thank you all for joining us for this great conversation. But in the meantime, if we come back from the break, we're telling you about that debate that we have with the quiz master. Sometimes I wish that people would be behind the scenes to find out the things that happen when we go on a break. So beautiful. <laughs> okay. All right. So for today, we're doing What Don't You Know, right? Yes, definitely. I'm excited I was, to I be... was second. Even though Derek I was some the lead producer said I was last the last time I contested with my You were second. Yeah. Okay. I second. Well, I... I, I Thankfully, I'm not contesting anything. Me too. You know. So th thankfully, there's no contest between us both. But we tell you the people who are contesting for this one. We have uh, John Apia. John Apia is former filmmaker and head of mission for the Commonwealth Enterprise and Investment Council. John, good to see you. How are you doing? I'm very fine, thank you. How are you? I'm, I'm fantastic. Good. I'm great. We also have <laughs> Ochiame Kwame. He's a Kwame, musician. The rap doctor. The guy the who never doctor. grows old, apparently. Strategic, apparently strategic marketer, UGBS. Hey. Uh, he's your Pressure. mate, eh? Pressure. Pressure. You know, <laughs> <laughs> okay. uh, apparently, yeah. apparently, he eats a lot of kontomi and dawa dawa, <laughs> uh, so he doesn't grow old. <laughs> And we have our quiz master, quiz master. <laughs> indeed, Nana Jesse Osu. NGO. Hey. Yes. Uh, okay. <laughs> Hi. Charlie, what's up? Charlie, Charlie, the rap doctor. Bema, bema, bema. Let me say. Charlie, Charlie, you want you want thing? Covid and me and. I want you. Say you to me and your COVID. <laughs> oh, hi, um, Junior. So should I say senior now? Uh, he's possibly, junior. possibly, possibly. NGO. Yes, uh, yes, because right now uh, it looks like home was not sweet after all. You left home and uh, you lost your hair. Okay. Things fell apart. Well, yeah. it was you know waves always go with the ocean, so I can see it is gone. <laughs> <laughs> All right, NGO, we're handing over to you. Please take it over. I, I'm prophetic for you, NGO. <laughs> oh, no, I can see. I can see that. I can see that. So James Gardner did not show up, and oh. because James Gardner is late, minus five. <laughs> so that is the first one. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we're going to start the quiz. And I have a Chiamme Kwame, the rap doctor. A Chiamme Kwame, the rap doctor. You know, as for me, every time that I'm talking, I talk like this because I speak English and I remove it one, 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 one. <laughs> rap doctor. Bema, Bema, Bema. Yes. Also known as Duncan McLeod. You know, Chiamme Kwame, we have, um, there's an issue that we have. We don't know your age. People say that you are young. People say you are old. They don't know. They say that you are only late mates. We don't know, but we are not going to go there. So, we're just about to start the show. It's a very, very simple show. We have two gentlemen, Ochiame Kwame, two legends. <coughs> Ochiame Kwame, the rap doctor who started his rap career somewhere in 1973, and he's still strong up until now. And now we have Junior, who is now not very junior, looks senior uh, right now, and the hair has run, baby run. So, rules <laughs> for the game, very simple. For every major question, you get three points. Three points. And uh, if you get a bonus question correct, you get one point. Okay? And you don't, yeah. you don't pass on the question. You don't say no idea. You have too much experience to say no idea. <laughs> NGO, well, I, I hope too many of the questions are not music questions because, otherwise, you know, Ochiame is already a book guy. Isn't he? Don't worry. <laughs> Okay. Don't worry. You will get music. You will get you will get everything that you want. You just have to be Ghanaian. I, I have a I have a funny feeling that signing up to this thing was a big mistake. I think so. <laughs> Don't worry. That's why, James, that's why James didn't turn out. <laughs> oh yes, James. He knows. He has suffered before. Okay, so we're moving to the first round. That is round one. Round number one. <laughs> And I'm starting off with you, Ochiame Kwame, the rap doctor. So Ochiame Kwame, this very first round, I'm going to ask you, you know, names of things, you know, generic names of things. 
You know, here in Ghana, we have a generic name for things. Like uh, when you say uh, 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 camp boot, we call it kambu. You know? Okay. And then, uh, like uh, John's head, we call it sakura. <laughs> so, careful, Ezio, uh, careful. The thing. <laughs> so, your very first question What is the gen generic name given to a protagonist in an action movie? Jack. Jack! Correct for three points. Yes, correct for three points. And that is Jack. Where are you? And if you live in Accra, you say Bloma. So that is correct for three points. Now, John. Yeah. What is the generic name given to an antagonist? An antagonist in a movie? Hmm. Usually it's killer. <laughs> three points. That is killer. And it reminds Blue me man of the man killer. killer in Things We Do For Love. Okay, now your question. Ochiame Kwame, the rap doctor. What do we call a gang leader in Ghana? A gang leader. Gangalia. Gangalia! Kwenjini, yesu. Hey! Ochiame Kwame, rap doctor. <laughs> okay. Now, what do we call buffroot? Buffroot. John. Ball float. So bad. So bad. So bad. So bad. So bad or buffroot? That is correct for three points. Yes. So, now to the very next stage. This is what we're going to do. This one, <coughs> I don't know how you're going to go about it, but you are all at home. So, I'm going to give you letters you know letters um, in the alphabet and then you're going to find an item in your home wherever you are so when i tell you maybe letter a you look for something or an object that represents a or that is an a or starts with an a is that clear cool okay. 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 <laughs> try my example example so when I say m you can give me a mouse which is okay. M, a mouse. Or okay. when you would say, you know, um, when I say H, you could give me hair, but John will be disadvantaged. So, <laughs> <laughs> and so you I wouldn't Messi say that. You. Messi <laughs> <Saudi. laughs> Call NGO okay. charity from now. Call him charity from now. Yeah, Messi oh, no, 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 no. Ch charity, no. Charity there. You know, we know NGO our, and charity from the, the same region. A lot of them are called charity. <laughs> Ochikami Kwame. Yes. So this is yours. In fact, this one, anybody who gets it first, <coughs> I'm going to give you the mark. All right? So the letter C. C. Table. Table, no way. Does it mean Table. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to give it to you. Or tell me why we got the first one. Table. John, what are you going to look for? John. John is going to John, John is going to look for what? I'm going to look for a teapot. Oh, you are... John, you want to carry a table? Make up in Kamwana. No. That was a table. Table. <laughs> That was a table, but Ochami Kwame got it first. Oh, so, okay. Go the ahead. Second one. Uh -huh. Second one. C. <laughs> the letter C. Any object that starts with C. Cup. 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 Now John got it correct. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so John got three points. Now John. Hey. And Ochami Kwame. Ochami Kwame. Ochami Kwame. Ochami Kwame. Ochami Kwame. Okay, okay, okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Now, your letter is letter S. 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 Yes. S. Shet. 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 Well, I'm going to give the tell me, Kwame, John is thinking too much. <laughs> <laughs> and that brings us to the end of the first round. So, if you want to know the score at the end of the first round, 
Ochiame Kwame has a whopping 12, one, two, 12 points. A round of applause. Yes. And Junior has nine points. And James Gardner has minus five. <laughs> yes, minus five. In fact, let me see, minus five, one, two, three, four, plus another minus 20. So James Gardner, minus 25. <laughs> so now we're moving to the second round. And the second round, um, it's rather unfortunate, but Ochiame Kwame and Junior and James Gardner, wherever you are, now we're doing music. Music. Are you ready? Yep. So, so I'm going to ask you certain questions. These are general questions in music, and you should think. Uh, <coughs> so, Achiame Kwame, I'm okay. coming over to you, sorry, Junior. Second round, John Apia. By the way, why do you spell Apia like Apia? You know, this, um, Angel, you know, this is actually the, the real spelling for Apia, you know? This is actually, actually the indigenous hey, spelling. Let us yeah, Achiame Kwame. Mm. Ochiame Kwame. Yes. The real spelling for Apia. Yes, spelling is saying. Apia. Said what spelling now? That is correct. Uh, 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 A-P-I-A minus the H. A-P-I-A mm, uh, minus the H. H. When the H comes, it comes to um, stretch the last A. It comes to My sort Apia. of. Uh, Apia. It doesn't so, have the H. Apia. Yes. Okay. Steven Apia. Yes. Okay. Now, Junior, John yes. Apia, your major question. Which Ghanaian artist is made in Ghana? <laughs> Ochiame Kwame. Ochiame Kwame! <laughs> 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 Okay. <laughs> now your question. Your question, Ochiame Kwame. Mention a popular stone in Ghana. Any popular stone. Any popular stone. stone. A boar, yes. Nyame boar. Oh. Floating stone. <laughs> Floating stone! <laughs> Blocking <laughs> stone. <laughs> so, Junior. Yeah. Now, this is your question. In the song, Rakia, if you know the song, Rakia, Katia, Uma, Mister, Wana, Meda, Where did Oforian Ponsa meet Rakia? A story day. A ye, a ye, Krabo day. Yes, and I just go. Yes, Ochami Kwame, a bonus question. <laughs> when over a person meet Rakia? Yes. <laughs> Dongo. Ochami Kwame. I said, and yes, Dongo. I say, Ochiano. I want a punch for Biasi and not a mood to Biasi. So what is it? Hono Shiano. And what's the other thing? I'm Shiano. What's the other thing? I'm Shiano. I'm not sure if it is cat. Yeah. Okay. So, I'll tell me, Kwame, your major question. Continue the lyrics to the song. Continue the lyrics to the song. A sabra chef, a sabra woman. A sabbe woman, or don't tea me when ya she, me when ya she, or don't tea men ya tampu baby. That is unfortunately wrong. <laughs> now, oh, 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 a sabbat chef on sabbat woman. Continue that. A sabbat chef on sabbat woman. May wo, may wo, and do, may wo, no. Abutu. Abutu. No, 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 no,
Tony Bly. Okay, now Junior, <laughs> your major question. Yeah, let's go. Your major question. Yeah, Tajua, where Fua Dua? Okay, <laughs> 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 Ah, correct. For one point. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so tell me, Fami, your mm -hmm. final question, and this will end the round. Your final question, and this will end the round. <coughs> Continue the lyrics to this song. <laughs> Correct for three points. And that was the song by Abrafo. And that song was throwing shots at Ochame Kwame. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that brings us to the end of mm -hmm. the second round. And at the end of the second <sighs> round, Ochiame Kwame mm -hmm. had seven points. And Junior had um, three points. So Ochiame Kwame is still leading uh, the second round. And of course, our man, <clears throat> James Gardner, has minus nine. <laughs> so don't worry, and they are James Gardner the berry. Oh, oh, berry. berry. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, the battle so far. James Gardner <laughs> loses epic male battle. He runs Kalo. <laughs> and that will be a male Debra's headline. Okay. Now the very final round. And this round is what we call Who Am I? Who Am I? And it's Who very simple. Yes, I will give quotes or songs or whatever, and then you identify who made that quote or said that quote. It's very, very simple. Okay, are we ready? Cool. Yeah. Okay, so I'm starting with you, Chami Kwame, the rap, da, da. the rap, da, da. the hepatitis ambassador. Chami, who da. am I? Who sang this song? It is not where with my soul. It is not where, where, where. It is not where with my soul. Wait. Oh, Pambo. Oh, Pambo! <laughs> Correct for three points. Yes! Yeah. one. <laughs> oh, Junior. You don't live in Ghana. This is why you oh, don't I'm, I'm, I'm coming. I'm coming strong. I'm coming strong. Yes. Okay. Now. This is yours. Yanko he blues. He blues to verse four. Yanko he blues. Who said this? He blues. A Christian says. Mini mi kuno yawali e fi nyame ho dalet. Obinim. No. Try again. Minimikunu Yawali if you name hot dialect. Say so in a upper hospital. Doctor Obeshawa Obesha or young gross gross and obeshe. Apostle Paul, just not to miss. Mini 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 mini. Mati, Mati, don't worry, mento. Or tell me Kwame. Florence Obini. Florence Obini! And you say me the half point, oh. That be also Obini. Obini and Florence Obini are two different people. <laughs> okay, 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 Barbara. <laughs> okay, Ochiame Kwame. Yes. Your major question. Your major 
question. Who said this? The past is not the present. The past is not the present. Because of you, I am walking around. <coughs> oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. Keep your eyes on the road. Nana mess boy bro, boyfriend. Nana Nana mess boyfriend. Nana mess boyfriend is called who? Hey, hey, come in. <laughs> hey, look at Come in, mess is you. I am I am the captain. Look at me. I am I am the captain. Look at me. Huh? Look at me. I am the captain now. Okay, your time is up. Yes, Junior. I mean kind of thing. Nana ma and Nanama and Ah, Nana man, main kind of main kind of Oh, you mama, 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 letter no, mama, letter no, make I letter S Sammy 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 no, could you? <laughs> After they mix the hall right now, look at what we are doing at Continental Hall. Oh, tell me, tell me, you are at Conti, right? Yeah, we are Continental. Oh, ha, ha, ha. Too, too bad. Oh, welcome to the Now, Junior. Yeah. This is yours. Conora <laughs> virus. Conora virus, menyahu oil, menyahu adro, conora, C O R A N A, conora virus. Ah, the, Who said that? Where did you been? Obinim! Obinim! Moha Obinimo, Moha Obinim. Moha no. Oh, he gives us a lot of content. <laughs> <laughs> He's a very good content provider. <laughs> oh, tell me, Kwame. Yes. Now, this is your question. This is your question. Bonita, Bonito. Bonita, Bonito, is that say? Yeah. Or start a rap room. Bonita, Bonito. El Kelpo, they say you. And then, then, yeah. Weather channel coming soon. Bonita. Yeah, fan share a sister Fiana. Oh, tell me, tell me, don't fall. Right, and you're correct. And you're correct. Men to men, fan mouth. Men to men, and you're dying. And fan mouth. Fellow Ghanaians, and you're John. Who said this? Bonita, bonito. Bonita, bonito. An accomplished rapper. Oh, tell me, tell me, has a couple of songs with him. Oh, really? Yes. Left the shores of Ghana for greener pastures. Left for greener pastures. Greener pastures. He was, in a, he was in a brawl that is a, a, a beef lately. Oh, really? With one of the most accomplished rappers. You know, my boy, my boy, my boy, my Debbie, Debbie, main guy, main guy. Over, and yet, over that, over that, over that, over that. Ah, seven, as 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 seven, if you do this for me, I'll give you, <clears throat> I'll give you five points. I'll give you five points. So, let's just say, <laughs> Junior meets a nice girl on the road, and Junior is trying to toast this girl. How will Junior go about it? Typical Junior with um, uh, what's it called? Sporting waves, shining like acorn, competing with uh, Pastor Chris. Please, how will it happen? Let's say, get out comes. Yo, Junior, yo, what's happening? I'll be like, you got a uh, girl? Okay. <laughs>
Angel. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Junior, Junior will be like, hey, sweetie, um, take a seat. Um, take a seat. You've been running on my mind all day long. So take a seat. I've been running on your mind. Sister Blimey, then I'm not running no. <laughs> so Junior will tell her, take a seat. You've been running on my mind all day long. They just say, what bread? So take a seat and relax. That's my best line. Blast and in the momo, and they here. Okay, so I'll give you five points. Yes, Junior was very, very cheesy. <laughs> oh, tell me, Kwame. Okay, this one is a bonus one, okay? Okay, if you win, I'll share the points between you and Junior. So this one is going for five points when your master go. So five points, or tell me, Kwame. Yeah, pet. Free style. Freestyle. <laughs> Freestyle. Tell me, Kwame. Okay. Friday, I'm a pa. Mm. Da. Da. Who is going to say a friend with a phone? So, I still mm. love to enjoy a friend for a memory. Memory, I'm a member of computer. And so, you must. Your barber, who was so happy, your buyer. Now, the questions be a alpha queen neighbor. Yes, you'll be no be like. You see, Obi, you be there. After you be there, then you be there. I can say no so for freestyle. So I say, my mom, you know, it's a yeah, my bad check. It's a yeah, I'm really paid style. It's a bit so. And yes, I will be with me at you too. I tell the family. Hey, but I know you have memories of this place of of Love FM. I know yes. that you have you have very peculiar memories. We'll go there very soon. Well, I'll say good morning to your wife. Um, yes. You know where where, where where everything happened. I had to go in the middle of the world. I'm going to go in the middle of the All right, so that brings us to the end of the contest. I'll give you seven points for that. So I'm sharing the mm. points. So, okay, I'll give you three points and Junior, four points. <laughs> so at the end of the third round, Ochiame Kwame has ten points. Hi. And Junior has, after me cheating for Junior, let me see, nine, class three. <laughs> thank you, thank 12, you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> plus, Junior has 14 points. Yay. So, <laughs> you want now you have to so wait the first a while. Please, I'm, I'm not done. I have to complete. The complete will take a while. 12 <laughs> plus seven. Angel, so, I, I hope you are not going to be in charge of the elections as well, eh? <laughs> <laughs> this counts <is> <laughs> Like these elections, eh? It will be a beautiful affair. <laughs> <laughs> so, at the end of the contest, Otiame Kwame has 29 points. <laughs> and Junior has 29 points. Hey, yeah. How did that happen? <laughs> and James Gardner mm -hmm. has a whopping uh, minus 20, minus 29, hey. 29, minus another three, minus. He has <laughs> minus. 35! Oh! <laughs> <laughs> so, at the end of the contest, we have a tie. Ochiame, Kwame, and Junior, you are tied. And uh, James Gardner has decided to carry the both of you because he goes to the gym. <laughs> for something good. So, this is the end of the virtual world, you know, with the legendary Ochiame, Kwame, and of course, the legendary, legendary. John Apia, a.k.a. Junior, Junior, who is Run, baby, Run. So right now, that is it. Um, Roland and um, Mama V. <laughs> it's okay. Uh, okay. Masa, ma 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 I have a gift to you. Apia, let me know. Don't be here. Oh, gifty. Plus five. Plus five, okay? Plus five. No, minus two. Oh, minus two. No, keep that five. Keep that five. You need it for later. No, we're, okay. we're subtracting two from your mark. Exactly. You already have, you're starting from zero, so minus that's two. negative two. Mm. But it, it, it's, it's okay. Minus no problem. two. No problem. Mm. <laughs> it, it's been an amazing uh, show, really. Yeah, and know, Chami, we understand Thank that you, you have, um, uh, you have a new initiative you La -La call lalafio.com. Is it a song? <coughs>
No, it's a portal. It's um, it's a website that mm. um, we have created because you know that uh, since the COVID came, artists are unable to perform for a fee. So we have created a, like an event center with a ticketing option where people can subscribe by paying five CDs a week to watch oh. three of the top artists uh, on Wednesdays, five to seven, on um, Fridays and Sundays we do gospel. Charlie, so Charlie, today, Charlie, Charlie. Every Crystal is coming. Wow. And so wow. you don't subscribe or you just go to www.lalafield.com. Okay. You put in your Momo number, we will take your five CDs and give you the opportunity to watch three amazing performances a week. That and is one. That's the strategic marketer there. <laughs> Alumni, you got your Ghana business school. Well, I'm going well, to run out of time. Yeah, so Jonathan, you too. Thank you. <laughs> thank you as well. And then NGO, yeah. thank NGO. you. And you. Thank you. All right. So I, 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 it's good to have you guys. Uh, amazing show it's been. But before we go, so happy 60th birthday to Mr. Jones for Sue, head of administration at the FDA. It's coming from the management of and staff of FDA to you and also to uh, Vanessa uh, Arusua Anan, also from Justice Anan. It's been a great show. Have an, uh, an entirely great day. Have a good weekend, too.